This video is a memory of my friend Steve. This is the last job that him and I worked on together. Four days after he did this job, he tragically passed away in an industrial accident. Way too young for a way too good welder. So, if you want to see the last job that we did together, here it is. Today's video shows fixing an excavator bucket that is used for concrete slab removal like when the highway is being torn up and whole sheets are lifted out of the ground that is the bucket that people use for this um, an operator instead of trying to lift the plate tried to pry on the plate and in the process broke the bucket and we will be air arcing the crack out down to a sharp point where we can then fill it back up with 045 dual shield wire. We'll be using 7525 gas. We're using the Propulse 300 and we're running anywhere between 250 and 450 inches a minute which translates to about 170 to 300 amps. So let's take a look at how that works and we'll go from there. Here you are witnessing the most important part of the job, which we call final inspection. Everybody's coming around, gathering, looking at this, talking smack, seeing what happened, if the crack is gouged out deep enough, if we left anything. So sometimes just step back, take five, look at this, have everybody look at it, come and look at it, see if you see anything. Whatever part you missed there is critical to the success of the of the job later on. If you didn't do this deep enough, if you had any inclusions in there, you're going to bake this right into your root. You're going to set yourself up for failure. If you don't have a good root pass in there, then whatever you do from there on can just not be very successful. So here you see Steve clean out some of the residue from the air arcing. Sometimes if things don't go as planned, there can be a little bit carbon deposits on the bottom of the material. He's cleaning up the slag on the outside, he's cleaning up the carbon deposits on the inside that might be there, just to assure that when we weld we get a really good bead on there. I shouldn't really say we, I mean, who am I kidding? He did most, if not all, of the work on this. I was just supervising and videotaping this.
So Steve is a good welder. Good welders weld hot, so Steve welds very hot. Just adjust the machine up a little bit. I'm just cracking jokes here. And um, now there is about 22 minutes of weld, chip, wire brush, and repeat to fill this entire canyon in there that we just air arced out. And um, I sped it up a little bit. If um, Hopefully it's not too boring for you. It's just under a minute now, I think. And um, yeah, enjoy watching it. Taking a deep breather, getting a sip of water, and then it's about time for some more quality control. Oh yeah, it does go all the way through. Well, you can gouge it in position off to this side. Yeah. I'll just get the that camera one's out done. of the way. Yeah. See, this goes to show you, it's not just a couple guys standing around there. Actually, sometimes you do find some more cracks or hairline cracks that open up with the heat from the welding. So then you can see those and you can address those. So here you see Steve using a wheat burner torch, 100,000 BTU. What we're trying to do here is, these buckets are typically made out of either T1, or AR400, or AR500 steel. And in order to weld on those, not only that you need to have the right wire with the right tensile strength and proper joint prep and everything, but you also need to have at least an AR500 and T1, you need to have a certain, even an AR400, it doesn't hurt you to have a certain temperature already in the material. You need to monitor your preheat, you may have to monitor your interpass temperature. So often enough, just getting the welding machine out and starting welding, no matter if it's make, take, or stick, or any flux core, self-shielded, dual shielded, it's not just that easy. There are a few things to consider when you weld this. You have to have the right filler material, the alloys need to match, temperatures have to match, procedures have to match. So the reason why some people weld these buckets and then they fail is not because they're not really a good welder, they don't know how to lay a bead. Often enough what's missing is the actual know-how to, what material to use, what procedure to use and how to go about this. So this was a hot and sunny day, it was probably 80 outside anyways. And uh, the preheat on this material, we agreed on a 250 Fahrenheit minimum. You don't really want to go much past 400, there's no additional benefit. So Steve gave it a quick over with that torch, and um, since we welded on the backside of the bucket already, there was already some heat in it. 
So just this quick preheat makes all the difference between success and failure. about 338 inches a minute and about 250 amps. A little bit more preheating right on the corner there for that other joint because the heat did not soak all the way across the bucket from where we were welding. <laughs> 